Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! This is CNN Tonight. I'm Don Lemon. The President of the United States is racist. A lot of us already knew that. Today, President Trump talking with lawmakers in the Oval Office about immigrants from Haiti, from, Haiti, from El Salvador, and Africa said, and I quote, why are we having all these people from shithole countries come here? But you know who he did say he would welcome here? He said the U.S. should bring in more people from countries like Norway. And CNN is told that he went on to say, why do we need more Haitians? Take them out. Those comments are frankly disgusting. There's other language I'd like to use, but we are on television. But you know what? They're not shocking, not even really surprising, because this is who Donald Trump is. This is what he thinks. Apparently, we have to go through this repertoire every time he says something like this or exhibits some racist behavior. This is a man who, in the Oval Office meeting last year, said Nigerian immigrants should, in his words, go back to their huts who in that same meeting said all Haitian immigrants have AIDS. The man who based his entire political career for years on the racist birther lie that President Barack Obama was born in Africa, a man who reportedly still believes that to this day. The man who started his campaign trashing Mexicans and then made the Muslim ban a centerpiece of his bid. The man who responded to white supremacists who killed a young woman in Charlottesville by claiming there were, in his words, very fine people on both sides. The man who responded to protest by black NFL players by calling them, quote, sons of bitches. Do I need to go on with all of this? I, I get tired of saying it. This is the man who today complained about immigrants who, quote, are from shithole countries. Tonight, a White House official told CNN that they're not worried. They think this is good for them. And the president's comments will actually resonate with his base. Jesus. Admitting that for all their talk about making America great, the president is playing to a base that welcomes his racism and will enjoy it. And that is disgraceful. With that said, here's what's worse and probably the most important point. So gather around the television, everyone. And this is for anyone who may be taken aback by my comments. I want to be very clear here. I don't really care if you are. I hope you are. For years now, it has been you know, two and a half years since he officially entered the political arena. For years, I and others have been trying to tell you, the American people, that this man was exhibiting bigoted behavior. I asked him about it a number of times and he denied it, but kept up the racist rhetoric and behavior throughout the campaign and now while he's in the White House. His supporters made excuses, continue to make excuses for him. Some of them people I personally know, some of them are his friends, as a matter of fact, and I can hear them now telling me, oh, Don, Donald didn't mean that. Donald isn't a racist or just people who don't know him. I don't think, I think it was taken out of context. I'm not sure. How many examples do you need of this? But he is a racist. And for all of you who over the last few years have uttered that tired, lazy, uninformed, uneducated, ignorant response of calling me and others who point out racist behavior racist, you know what you can go do? I can't say that, but you can go read a book, a history book, because you might learn that people from some of those shithole countries were slaves who were brought here by force to help build this country and then start your learning process from there. You also might want to do some self-examination. What does it say about you that no matter what, no matter what, you continue to make excuses for this man for his vile behavior, this sort of vile behavior, doesn't that make you just as bad, if not worse, than him? And I have to be honest, I was, I was not shocked that Donald Trump reportedly called the majority of black and Hispanic countries uh, or continents shitholes. I wasn't shocked, I'm not. I'm really not outraged by it. I'm not outraged. I'm tired of being outraged, as a matter of fact. I've been outraged too many times. It's more important to be strategic 
than to be outraged. Some people can be outraged, but it's more important for level-headed people to be strategic rather than outraged. Otherwise, it becomes a sky is falling situation every time he says something dumb or stupid or racist. Here's why I'm not outraged. Because people of color warned you. You called us racists or race baiters. I'm not mad that you call me those things because I'm not one of them. So why are you mad if someone calls you a racist if you know you're not one? Think about that. If you know you're not a racist, then why are you mad about it when someone calls out racism? What does that say about you? You know what those black and brown folks who you call racist are saying now? They're saying you bought it, you own it. And as we say in the South, and you know what this means, bless your heart. Hello, good afternoon to you. Is Donald Trump a racist? He said a number of things and arguably done a number of things policy wise that would uh, lead some people to believe that he is. Um, uh, but not everybody does, of course. And uh, many of the people who put him in power um, don't believe he's a racist or they do believe he is one and they are two. Maybe that could be their reason for voting for him. Who knows? But there are a number of very pointed things that he has either done or failed to do. He famously failed to disavow the Ku Klux Klan. Um, during the campaign and then he, he said the reason he, he didn't and couldn't in the interview in question was that he couldn't quite hear what was being asked of him. He used an expression uh, uh, once saying he had a great relationship with the blacks, which doesn't to me sound like the kind of language that would come from a person who did have a great relationship with people of different ethnicities. Um, there was the issue with the uh, Gold Star family, the uh, parents of a Muslim soldier who uh, hit out against him during the campaign. Remember when he, the father, uh, Mr. Khan, the father said, uh, have you even read the US Constitution? I would glad you give, give you my copy. Remember that moment? Um, he uh, claimed a judge was biased because he's a Mexican. Uh, and the fundamentals of racism, let alone the specifics, are that it is a sense that the colour of somebody's skin or their race um, makes them less than uh, you, less than someone else. Uh, that probably falls into that category, I would argue. Um, uh, what else? Uh, he, his company uh, was sued by the Justice Department before he was president for not renting to black people. Um, so there's something of a pattern emerging here, isn't there? He refused to condemn the white supremacists um, in that rally uh, in which a young activist was killed, um, talking about uh, good people, bad people on both sides. Um, so on it goes. He, he hasn't made it easy for people to be very clear that he is not a racist. That's probably the kindest thing that you can say. Um, and it, this is what he said overnight, responding to a reporter's question specifically about what he is alleged to have said in a meeting about African and other countries. Have a listen. No, I'm not a racist. I am the least racist person you have ever interviewed. That I can tell you. He is, I'm not going to use the word, um, he is alleged to have used really quite appalling language in relation to particular countries that have a sort of, it's called temporary protected status um, in the eyes of the United States, a number of nationalities, but actually uh, the largest groups of, of people with that temporary protected status uh, come from countries like Haiti, so they weren't African countries at all, something like Haiti, uh, I think El Salvador was in the, Honduras was in the list as well. Um, so it isn't just Africans we're talking about, but there has been a very vocal uh, response uh, from African nations and African leaders. Uh, the Democrat Senator Dick Durbin, before we speak to our guest, I want you to hear what he said, or, or I will tell you what he said. The audio wasn't that great. So he was in the room uh, when these things, which are alleged to have been said, were allegedly said. He says, uh, these things which were hate-filled, vile and racist, uh, were comments that were made by Donald Trump. And he says, I use those words advisedly. I understand how powerful they are. And it is it is a very strong thing to accuse anyone of being racist. Uh, Dick Durbin went on to say, I cannot believe that in the history of the White House, in that Oval Office, any president has ever spoken the words that I have personally heard our president speak yesterday. Uh, you have seen, I, I don't agree with him that. I can imagine that some have in the, in the history of America. You've seen the comments from the press. I have not read one of them that's inaccurate. So he's emphasising that from his position in the room, the president did use this language. Uh, to no surprise, the president started tweeting this morning and denying he used the words. It's not true. He said these hate-filled things. But it is. He said them repeatedly. Those are the words of Senator Dick Durbin. Well, here to defend the president 
is uh, Raheem Kassam, editor-in-chief of Breitbart London. You do not believe that Donald Trump is a racist, Raheem Kassam. Hi, thanks for having me. Uh, no, I don't. I don't believe that uh, that President Trump is a racist. Um, you know, the 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 uh, history of, of of race in America is is obviously uh, scattered with with these quotes, and you can you can pick them from right and left. Hillary Clinton calling black people super predators. Um, you can you can pick them across the political divide. I think what we have to what we have to look at is people's actions. Um, rather than, you know, you, 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 you know, all due respect, you can read off a list of things that he said that you interpret as perhaps um, untoward, but you also haven't read off a list of the things he's done and he's doing, by the way. Tell me. Which helps uh, black people tell in me. the United States. I will absolutely tell you. There were great housing development projects in New York City that helped regenerate neighborhoods uh, in which the, it, was, it was either a majority or a significant number of ethnic minority people. Uh, there was... There was Loads of organizations and institutions that he gave money to, charitably gave money to, over the course of his private life as an individual, which also helped these things. You look at now in the United States of America what he's doing in challenging uh, the, the uh, collapse of manufacturing here in the U.S. as well, where I currently am. And it's actually the ethnic minority communities that seek to benefit most from this because they're the ones being put out of jobs when jobs get outsourced to places like China and things like that. And that's why, actually, you had a greater turnout from black voters for President Trump than would have turned out for any other of the Republican candidates, the 17 other that stood on that stage with him. Mitt Romney what? couldn't turn out those numbers. Ted Cruz couldn't turn out those numbers. You'll remember, of course, he said, what do black people have to lose? Because they had a black president here in the United States for eight years, and black voters came out of the Obama administration saying, well, actually, we didn't get anything from that. We, you know, our, 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 our purposes in voting for this person was to improve our lots, and our lots did not improve over those eight years. So I think it's more of a situation where I won't, you know, I won't say, oh, you know, he's completely uh, devoid of any blame for anything he's done. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is we have to put it in the context of actually both sides are incredibly culpable when it comes to the plight of ethnic minorities in the United States. And it doesn't serve anyone's purpose to sort of divvy them up into these sort of well, petty not, nationalist Yeah, OK, can I just say I something? Can I just say something? N not mm, yeah. Well, <laughs> to, to say let's not talk about identity politics in relation to Donald Trump is, is, is a bit rich, but we can come back to that in a second. Th th well, well I'll, I'll, okay. tell, I'll tell you in a minute. I just wanted to focus on what you said okay. before that point. When you, when e e even Barack Obama, even Barack Obama, um, has he has made it very clear that it, from the point of view of his presidency, he was never going to be able to do enough about race because it, it can't be just the job of a president to heal the racial wounds and the racial disparities that exist, not just in America, but in America in, in their case, because racism isn't just personal, is it? It's in any society where racism is, it exists, it exists in the foundations of that society. Would you accept that, Raheem um, Kassan? Yes, I do. Y yes, so I it do. can it never be about one man. Like... So, so asking, asking whether... Right, but you, you're the one who's making it about one man. This segment is about Donald Trump. Yes. Uh, if we want to have a that, That's what I'm saying to you. I, but I am making it... No, I am making it about one man. I, I, because I want to know whether... Well, you've told me you do not believe he is racist. But I also... The, the reason I bring Obama's comments in was it, it's not... Asking asking about one man's approach to race isn't about solving racism. It's simply about asking about that man or woman's character. Yes, I think. And I solving think racism is a much deeper it's, job, it's longer Martin job, Luther harder King. job than that. Of, of course, and it's Martin Luther King weekend here. It's a long weekend here in the United States, and 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 President Trump appeared on uh, a stage with uh, Martin Luther King's uh, descendants and family members on Friday. Um, to, to talk just about that. I think this comes down to economics at the end of the day. Uh, what it really comes down to for, for black voters in the United States is, is can they get jobs? Um, can, they, can, they, can they make a living? Can they improve their lot in life? Are they, are they leaving for their children uh, better than they inherited? And I would argue that this president is doing more for those people than, than, than the last administration did. And I don't think there's much, much evidence but, to say that that's the contrary. But, but uh, Raheem Kassam... But Ra Raheem oh, yeah. Kassam, jobs, right. of course, matter. E the economy matters, of course. But a, a person in any society, whatever colour they are, they need, they need more than just a job, don't they? Rosa Parks had a job, but she couldn't sit 
where she wanted to on a bus. It's, it's about more than that. It's about a president leading from the front and saying powerfully that everybody in the country deserves equal respect. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. I don't think I've ever heard him say it. Did um, I miss that? Did I miss that speech? I think I, I think you did miss it. I think he said it multiple times, in fact. And I think he's also given in, in incredibly long speech, lengthy speeches during the campaign on this. I was disappointed uh, and on the back of Charlottesville, but I understand that what he was seeking to do on the back of Charlottesville, and I was there in Charlottesville on the day, by the way, and what he was seeking to do was there was a lot of confusion about who these groups were, who they were acting on behalf of, and who was constituent parts of these separate protest groups um, in Charlottesville. There weren't just two sides, by the way. There were a whole bunch of different groups and he was waiting to hear back from his advisors well who am i talking about when i go out and condemn people on mass well, and, and, and it's well when the when one of those well when one he, of those groups saw, but when one of those groups is holding yeah. nazi flags it's quite easy to say who you're talking about isn't it you're talking about neo-nazis well, one of what, yeah one and he of wouldn't the condemn them holding nazi flags and doing nazi salutes and and holding but he wouldn't calls. condemn he them the group on the night on the night before what happened in Charlottesville. The, sh the next day is what he was talking about. And see, it's very easy to conflate those because it was actually the tiki torch holding neo-Nazis that were protesting the day before in Charlottesville. So he wasn't talking about that at the time and none of the media was talking about that at the time. It's, it's only, it's incumbent upon us out there doing journalistic work to actually get into the nitty gritty so, of it. So when, painting with broad brush so when his own Republican colleagues um, say these comments were made um, and when uh, uh, cheerleader in chief for Donald Trump, Paul Ryan, House Speaker, senior Republican, uh, says his comments uh, has accepted that they happened and said they were very unfortunate and unhelpful, what do you say to them? Mm. Well, firstly, you have to appreciate that Paul Ryan is nothing near a cheerleader in chief for, for Donald Trump. He was an active participant in the Never Trump campaign before the election. Ah, uh, post-election. It's a whole Trump new world, Trump. though, isn't it? He can't get well, enough of him. The same, uh, govern they're part of the same governing party. You would expect them to work together. If they didn't work together, you'd be complaining about that as well. Um, you know, here's the thing. Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell, who are the two leaders in the... Uh, in the Republican Party at the moment outside of the White House want nothing more for this presidency to fail. Um, they don't have anything in common with President Trump. They have more in common with somebody like Jeb Bush, who was their candidate at the last election. But when we come on to what he said, uh, which I guess is what we're really discussing here, about the S-holes comment about other countries, well, is it, is it or is it not the case? We have to make this distinction. Is it or is it not the case that the OECD, Transparency International, all of these other bodies around the world are constantly telling us that we need to give more in foreign aid, we need to give more in private personal donations, there are corruption indexes. You know, that there are yes, Rahim, but there. yes, of so course, of course there are countries, I mean, Haiti is the perfect example, there are countries in extreme need, both politically and socially and physically, of course there are. But, but it's one thing to discuss that and act on that, and it's another thing to dismiss an entire nation the way that he did, or allegedly did, depending on which uh, uh, version of events you believe. Um, but but a, a feisty defence there from Rahim Kassam, editor-in-chief of Breitbart London. Um, a defence of Donald Trump. Is it one you can share? Do you believe he's racist, the President of the United States? 0345 973 the number to call. If he is, he won't be the first. 84850 is the number to text. You can tweet at LBC. It's 2.16. Is Donald Trump a racist? His former wife Ivana Trump said on Good Morning Britain uh, this week that uh, he isn't a racist, he just says silly things sometimes. I wonder whether she would include this on the list of silly things. In 1989 on NBC he said, I think sometimes a black may think they don't have uh, an advantage or this and that. I've said on one occasion, even about myself, if I was starting off today I would love to be a well-educated black because I really believe they do have an actual advantage. Uh, in the campaign, of course, he called Mexican immigrants, and as he described them all as criminals and rapists. Um, I wonder whether Ivana would think that was just silly. Uh, he talked about a complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. Is that silly or is that policy? Uh, he described in June of 2017 uh, 15,000 recent immigrant arrivals from Haiti as all having AIDS. Um, and on it goes. Um, he, of course, spent years suggesting that the nation's first black president, Barack Obama, was born not in the US, but in Kenya. 
um, and it's a lie that he still hasn't really acknowledged. Um, and uh, called Barack Obama, who was an editor in chief of the Harvard Law Review, a terrible student. Terrible. That doesn't. That's not necessarily racist, but it is uh, all part of his ridiculous and constant attacks on Barack Obama. And on it goes. Anyway, I, so I, I think the evidence mounts that Donald Trump is indeed a racist. I think it mounts on a pretty regular basis. How about you? Oh three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. Brunel in Chingford. Hello. Hi, Sheila. Um, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of missed, really, when I hear people asking that question and generally arguing that he's not. I find it quite surprising. Apart from what you have also said, I mean, these are also factual things, so if anyone wa wants to check them out, they can check them out for themselves. I mean, uh, he was sued more, on more than one occasion for not actually want, wanting to rent his properties specifically to black people. Mm -hmm. And he settled uh, without you know, admission of guilt, but he settled anyway, and he was sued twice. And I think that was by the Nixon administration. So to me, that <laughs> if that's not racist, what is? I mean, he, he apparently stated that um, uh, he didn't want black people counting his money. Um, he had recently, I think it was over a month ago, when he came out with that Pocahontas uh, comment um, um, against, uh, I think it was Elizabeth Warren. Um, and so, if you, if you, maybe if you took one incident or one thing that happened, you could probably argue the idea that maybe he's not racist. But if you didn't put everything together. Um, then you can't honestly. I'm, I'm kind of I'm baffled. You can't honestly think that the man is not racist. I think what's worse is not the fact that he's racist. Is that the fact that he's now in a position to you know to bring up policies and implement policies based on that racism and those faults. That's more dangerous. And, and that doesn't just apply to America. That would be a lesson for us here um, to 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 really pay attention to people's you know beliefs because. When you are, when you're the average Joe and you're a racist and you shout out racist comments to someone, that doesn't matter. I mean, it matters. Well, you can get arrested. But you can get arrested, but you're not. You can't do it as much damage as if if you're in a position of power to then, you know, we're having the, 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 those kind of beliefs and being a, a racist person. Then you're in a position to to change I, I, policies. I, 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 and I know that dangerous. I know that in America, freedom of speech is a is a, is much more broadly upheld than it is in this country. We we draw lines a lot more firmly than they do in law. I mean, um, and uh, I wonder whether he could be arrested for incitement with this language. He, he probably could in this country. Brunel, thank you. Brunel in Chingford. Uh, Mikel in Ricelip. Hi. Um, good afternoon, Sheila. Thank you for taking my call. Pleasure. Appreciate that. Um, what I would like to say is I hope um, I'm not being rude, but personally, I don't think Donald Trump is racist. I think he's prejudiced, just like most of us are. But what we forget is he lives and he comes from a racist system. And I think people need to understand words before they use them, because people just use words, but they have no understanding of them. All of us are prejudiced. But prejudiced system, based on colour, you mean? It could be prejudiced based on colour, it could be prejudiced based on the way the person looks, their hair, whatever. Yeah, but I'm talking about something much more specific than prejudice. Okay, you say he's prejudiced based on colour. If Donald Trump is... If you're prejudiced based on colour, aren't you racist? Well, if he is racist, then America's racist. Well, we know America's America's been racist. On, America's been built on racism. Mm. And if you actually go to America, what I find quite strange, everybody's going mad about what he said about Africa. I mean, I'm from the continent. I actually come from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I see myself as Nigerian. I don't actually use the term black as a description of myself. Yeah. I, I think we've spoken about this before, mean. haven't we? Yeah, yeah, because I don't actually mm. understand what... No, and I think, you're, I think it's an interesting point that you make as well. I think it's you, you get to say who you are. Yeah, because... And what I find as well are among so-called black people, I think a lot of them like to be the victim because then you don't have to take responsibility for your action. I'll give you a perfect example. They use the word, the N-word, but yet if somebody of a Caucasian... Um, background uses the word. You know, people of colour go mad and say, oh, you're not. But then again, how does it make sense for you to use that word on somebody that's black? Give me an example of what, when you say uh, black people liked or some black people like to be the victims. Give me an example of what well, you mean by that, because it well, may be that, sure. that well, it may be that those people f believe deeply that a racist politics still hasn't been properly tackled and it's still affecting the lives of young black men and women, boys and girls, so it needs to it needs to constantly be addressed. Well, I'll give you an example, Sheila. Um, 
I'm aware that racism exists. When I'm in particular places, I'm aware of where I am. No matter where I travel around the world, they'll see me as a black man. Mm-hmm. You know, they'll relate. The first thing people ask me is, oh, I listen to hip-hop. I don't listen to hip-hop. I find it derogatory towards women and towards men. The very first thing people will say to you is about hip-hop. Yeah, they'll say, oh, I, I listen to hip-hop. I listen to Jay-Z. I listen to it. I don't. I didn't even vote for Barack Obama. I would never vote for Barack Obama. He's a politician. Did you have a vote? No, if I, if, I, if, if I was living in America, I would never vote for Barack Obama because he's a politician first and foremost. I wouldn't vote for any politician regardless of where he comes from. But what I find is within the so-called black community, it's almost like it helps them to be the victim because then you don't take responsibility. It's like- well, I'm, I'm going to allow some uh, black people if they wish to respond to what you said that there, Mikhail, because it's not something I see myself. Uh, you've, we've had the conversation like this before. I'm, I'm always a little wary when a, a caller calls for the second time and just has pretty much the same conversation that we had the first time. But thank you for your contribution anyway, Mikhail, um, because we are talking about something altogether different. But thank you. Dan in Bristol. Hello there. Hello, Sheila. How are you? Hi. Uh, you don't think Donald Trump is, is driven by racism in this instance? No, I, I don't think there's any doubt that he is racist, but I think the biggest ism that he suffers from, and excuse me for not knowing the, the term, but shall we call it wealthism? I think he only sees... Let's just use it as a term. I like it. Wealthism. <laughs> Well, it, it, I think he only sees the value of human life in terms, or the you know the worth of of a life in monetary uh, in terms. terms of yeah, in terms of your wealth, which would explain why, say for example, the Nazi um, rallies in Charlottesville when he when he said that there are many many great people on both sides. What he means is there are wealthy people on both sides. That's that's all he that's what he means. I don't think um, his recent comments about the you know, the S-hole countries. Um, I don't think he's talking about taking necessarily black people. I think he's talking about poor. taking poor people. That's how he sees people in, in life in general. You why, know, don't we take, why don't we take Norwegians? Who have got a few bob in their pocket, yeah. <laughs> a, a country known for its mass emigration, not. Yeah, yeah, quite. Um, but, I mean, I don't doubt that he's got um, Muslims who he deals with in business terms and black people. I'm sure he's got... Um, huge business dealings with people in the Middle East and in Africa and wherever. I'm sure he's got no problems at all dealing with them if they've got money. It's the poor people he doesn't like. Now, don't get me wrong, I think he is racist as well and sexist and all the rest of it. But I think the biggest... But you don't think that's what was driving that comment? I think it's more the the, the poor people thing. I think it's also what's driving uh, what uh, what drove his recent tax reform. Um, there was nothing in there to help poor people. It's it's purely about wealth. Um, do you remember the uh, the film Wall Street in the eighties with Michael Douglas as Gordon Gecko? Yes, Gecko? yes. And towards the end of, towards the end of the film, he dismisses ninety percent of the American people as having little or no net worth, and that's Donald Trump. And therefore, little or no worth. Really interesting observation, Dan. Thank you, Dan. In Bristol, more of your calls on this in a few minutes. Is Donald Trump racist? Uh, and do respond to uh, some of the calls that we've had already. It's wealthism, not racism, uh, says Mike, my previous caller, who, by the by, also thinks Donald Trump is a racist. But he thinks these latest comments about Haiti, El Salvador, Africa um, uh, and countries uh, he describes as assholes. I'll leave your remark. Well, you know, you know the word. I'm just not going to say it, but you know the word. Um, that it's less to do with racism when it comes to his comments the other day. It's the it's the worth of these people. They're poor, so they are not worth America's effort, which is rather anti-American, isn't it? When you think of the spirit of America, Paul in Thornton Heath. Heath hello. Hi. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. I think. I think. We, we shouldn't attempt to rewrite history. And I think your contributor from Breitbart was trying to do that. He was trying to rewrite history. And he did that, first of all, by not answering your question. He began by trying to say, this is what other people have said, which, are, which is racist. Now, from my standpoint, what Hillary Clinton said, which he quoted, was also racist. And that doesn't mean that Donald I Trump... I wasn't familiar agreed. with that quote well, or the context of it. Can you enlighten me? <laughs> I wasn't familiar with the quote either, but my point is very simply, 
just because she's racist doesn't mean that he is not. You know, his statements over the years, and we're not just talking about this one on Haiti and, and the African countries, but, you know, we're going back to pre-election time, and one of the lady contributors came on the phone and she ran through a list of them. Clearly racist. What we should never confuse, and this is what... Um, Donald Trump is attempting to do is what Mike correctly observed. He has a lot of time for anybody who is wealthy, and that includes black people. But that's a profit situation. That's a business situation. So you can have a race. It's a what's in it for me, isn't it? What's in it for me? And if and if what's in it for you is giving and sacrifice and difficulty and complexity, he's not really big on those things, is he? Giving and sacrifice and complexity. So you can have the most racist shopkeeper in the world. He will never turn away the black person with money. He will always welcome you into his business. And this is, this is what Donald Trump has done. And the, the, the concept that somehow the proof that he is not racist are the black people who were disenchanted with, with Obama, that is ridiculous. Because if you check the statistics, and this is why we have to be weary of fake news and the rewriting of history if you check the statistics of the black vote for hillary clinton versus the black vote for donald trump it is outstanding i think was in the region of 80 to 90 percent the reason why donald trump won wasn't because of disenchanted black people it was disenchanted white people Exactly, and it was because the the vote and more women, more women than I could, well, more women than I could believe, and more well Catholics because he trotted out the anti-abortion thing quite late in the day, didn't he? And that uh, somehow fooled the Catholics. Yeah, and what that demonstrates is that he's actually more of a politician than most people are giving him credit for. Because what politicians know to do is they play on the things that work for individual groups. And he played on his so-called religion. He played on all sorts of fear of of the immigrant, of the Islam, of the rapist uh, Mexicans who are waiting to rush the borders. And he'd build a wall. And that's what he's done. And he's played a tremendous... I, I actually don't think he means a great deal of what comes out of his mouth, if you see what I mean. I think he will literally say what is required to get what he wants at the end of that particular five minutes, half an hour, day, whatever it is. He'll say what he thinks will work. I don't think he's a man who worries I mean, unduly I mean, about what comes out of his mouth and the truth of it. You may, you may be absolutely right because he's protected from consequence by his money and by his position. Because no no normal man on the street could get away with saying that just for a, a, a vote or two. But he is protected by his money. And if you look at the people he associates with who are not white, they are the wealthy. So Mike's point is absolutely accurate and it is supported by his racism. Thank you very much, Paul, for your call. Paul in Thornton Heath. Mo has called from Raynham. Mo, hello. Hi, Sheila. You all right? Fine, thank you. Far um, away. Yeah, yeah, see, look, I think, I mean, Donald Trump is definitely racist. I mean, he's not racist as in, like, sort of a Ku Klux Klan member or, like, the, a neo-Nazi. He's not that racist, but he is racist. And I think anyone who says otherwise is, is kidding themselves. Um, I think what I compare it to, which is quite interesting, because I totally agree with the guys you've just had, is um, you saw the sexual harassment whole thing that happened with that, where there's a lot of women's quite strong women, so-called strong women, are quite quick to say, um, oh, well, if someone touches your leg, you just tell them to not do it, that kind of thing, and almost belittling any woman who couldn't do that. Um, I think it's similar with this. So you'll get some black people who early on said, um, for example, black people are victims, um, who are possibly strong themselves, they haven't faced much racism in their life and that, and they'll go, yeah, get over it, stop being a victim, that kind of thing. Whereas if you're like me, like a black person who's experienced racism most of my adult life and stuff, um, you're not being a victim. It is absolutely reality. Um, And, yeah, he's for me, Trump, what he's done with just his views and what he's done and stuff, he's just just given cover to um, millions of racists who've, just been hiding for years like and he's allowed them to come out of the gutter i mean you see he's following he's, he's following is like he's base everything every time he says things like this um he's base it's brilliant it plays really well for his base he's, so he, he's it, wor- it, it works for him so he does it yes it works for him so he does it and like i said I no conscience yeah none whatsoever and he knows that i mean whatever people think about him and i think he's a he's a vile vile individual um but 
he's very calculated and, and, and quite a smart guy, whether you like that or not. And I think he knows that. He knows saying these things. Charlottesville was classic. Like, he knew to sort of come out against the neo-Nazis and stuff would go against some of his core vote. So uh, he ran a little middle route instead. Exactly, and that's the safer thing in that. And, and yeah, and, and the N-word, because the guy earlier on said something about the N-word. Again, the N-word, for example, is a joke as well, because for me, as a black person, because I don't personally use the N-word, but if some of my black friends and stuff use the N-word with each other and stuff, that's up to them, because in terms of... It's no different to some of my gay friends. If they're using words to each other, like... I don't feel like I have to get involved in that. That's that's not... I don't have the right to get involved in that because gay people um, have experienced so much persecution over the years that if they want to take the power out of those words and things that they feel comfortable, that's up to them. It mm. has nothing to do with me and I'm intelligent enough to know I don't get involved in that. It's the same with women. Like, my, my wife, if she makes a joke comment to a sort of girl mate and stuff like that, I'm not going to go like... Well, they're saying that to each other. Can I say that to you? It's basic intelligence. And but that's again. But like, that's again about the complex, the kind of complexities. I, I agree with what you just said there at the end, Emma. But it's the kind of complexities that I don't think uh, Donald Trump. It's, I, it's not that he's not capable of them. I think he just chooses not to uh, enlist them at all in the way he goes about his business. Thank you, Mo, for your call on that question of um, uh, Raheem Kassam claiming that Hillary Clinton called young black men super predators. Um, uh, somebody has helpfully sent me some fact checks on that. Um, it was a speech she gave back in the 90s uh, uh, talking about the Violent Crime Control and Law Enforcement Act, which her husband, Bill Clinton, had signed into law. So this presumably is when she was first lady. Um, she says much of it is related to an initiative called community policing. And she was talking about getting more police officers on the streets. One of the goals that the president had when he uh, passed that bill in, in uh, 1994, she was talking about it subsequently. Um, and the super predator remark within this speech about the number of African-Americans being killed in drug related incidents. Um, uh, she says, we also have an organized effort against gangs. Uh, this was in a televised interview. Just as in previous generations we had an organised effort against the mob, we need to take these people on. They are often connected to big drug cartels. They are not just gangs of kids anymore. They are often the kinds of kids that are called super predators, i.e. no conscience, no empathy. We can call, uh, well, sorry, we can talk about why they ended up that way, she says, but first we have to bring them to heel. So in the full context of what she said, that does not explicitly amount to, to uh, Hillary Clinton referring to black men as super predators, does it? 03456060973. Is Donald Trump a racist? 84850, the number to text. You can tweet at LBC. It's 245. A jewel. I hope I've got your name right. Beautiful name. Jewel or Jewel? Jewel. Oh. What a nice name. Hello. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you for having me. Um, I just wanted to share my views on this subject because I think that what's going on with Donald Trump is people are slightly generalizing him. I think we have to treat him as an individual because this man is a man that will speak what he thinks. He is so discriminative. He discriminates gays. He discriminates poor people. He discriminates everybody. Mm -hmm. And he feels like he can just get away with it. And it's causing so much uprising people. You know, we have people wanting to disassociate themselves with their race because of, you know, politics. We have people, you know, it, it, it's, it's becoming to a point where, you know, where we're at that point now where we're saying, what next? What next is Donald Trump really going to do? Like, um, for example, uh, you know, for example, gays. We shouldn't be discriminating them. People should be allowed to do what they want to do at the end of the day. It's a free world. You know, we're supposed to be able to have equal rights. And he's somebody that continuously preaches that we shouldn't have equal rights. You know, we should separate the poor from the rich. The rich get rich and the poor get poor. And it's getting ridiculous now. Hopefully I don't, I don't think out. he explicitly advocates those things, does he? Yeah, he doesn't explicitly do it. But he does it in a way that, you know... If you are like, I, I wouldn't like to generalise, but I guess we all kind of hear the underlying subliminals. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and they're not they're not that deeply buried, are they? His subliminals? No, they're not. <laughs> they're they're, not, not. they're it, really yeah. not. Uh, his Twitter account is just. <laughs> that explains his subliminals. But the, but the thing is, he is no different now than he has ever been. 
you know, no, the, the, exactly. the, the woman who spoke the truest and most accurate words about Donald Trump before he became president uh, was Michelle Obama. When, right. when she didn't talk explicitly about... You know, the one time she did talk explicitly about him was after that tape came out of him talking about um, access to women's private parts whenever he wanted it, blah, blah, blah. Um, there's a bit of a something on your line, Joelle, so if you can Sorry, try and go somewhere more sheltered. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but she said, you know, uh, the, the presidency doesn't change you. It amplifies who you already are. Right, and I agree with that. And 100%. that's what, well, it's what we've seen, isn't it? It's what we, it's, yeah. He is just an amplified version of what he's always been. Yeah. And, you know, with everything going on with Weinstein at the moment, I mean, I just want to know what's coming next from Donald Trump. We, I think he's been ignored and excused too many times for his, uh, you know, constant... Uh, this, the, the behaviour that he displays is just irrational. Nobody understands it but him. And, you know, the supporters, of course. But, you know, I, I, I can't make sense of it. Well, uh, the, the reason I've been so... From the very beginning, um, I've been so explicit about my distaste for Donald Trump is because which as a journalist of many, many years isn't my normal approach to things. But I, I, I just think when he's gone, when he's gone, yeah. I don't want to look back and say that I didn't say, you know? Right. Say that I didn't say what was staring me and everybody else in the face. I didn't want to be one of the people in the crowd going, oh, the Emperor's clothes look nice. I wanted to be the little kid going, uh, he hasn't got any on. You can all see that, can't you? He hasn't got any right. on. You know? And it, to me, I think we're just going to have to batten down the hatches and hold tight until he's gone. Right. And we do have to wait and see what's going to happen when he goes because the impact that he's putting up on you know, the entire world, let's be honest, it's, it's, it's really it's really impactful. And well, I think there has to be, whoever comes next has to be the biggest bridge builder that America has ever seen, it seems to me, for its own sake. It has to be the biggest um, uh, sort of drawer together of people that the world has ever seen. I don't know who that person is, um, but I hope... I hope they emerge soon. Thank you, Jewel, for your for your for your name, for your call, and I really like your name. I thought it was Jewel, as in the singer, but it's Jewel. Max in Hern Hill. Hello there. Hi, Sheila. You were affected by Mikel's call about twenty minutes ago. You don't, you didn't like it. Um, no, I'm not sure I didn't like it. I just thought he contradicted himself because he referred to himself as non-black, but then when he says that he goes to different countries around the world. He, he sees himself as a black man, so either you see yourself as a Nigerian or you see yourself as a black man, but to me, they're both intertwined. Well, I've spoken to him before about this. The reason he thinks they're not necessarily intertwined is that he... he believes that race is an invented... and it is. Racism is, is an invented notion based on people's skin colour. And he just says... I, I mean, I, how how it w works in his life I'll, is anybody's guess, but he just says, I'm not playing your game. I'm Nigerian. Well, okay. so, well the thing is, we live in a system. So, for example, um, I'm black in colour or brown in colour, let's say, to be, to be precise. But my um, daughter, she's also brown in colour. Now, she sees herself as English because she has no connection to where her, gra her great-grandparents came from. Mm -hmm. But because of the colour of her skin people always ask her where she's from. She doesn't understand that because she's, she's 20 now. So she understands it because she understands um, her history and her culture. But she's not from Jamaica. But she is... And, and but her, she is... Her great-grandparents yeah, but she is of British subjects. But time. she is of Jamaica, isn't she? In the same way that I am not from Ireland, but I am of uh, Ireland. See what I mean? Well, see, the thing is, Jamaica... Well, I do see what you mean, Sheila, but Jamaica and Ireland are two different countries. Jamaica... You are not classed as black if you're Jamaican. Like, you've got white Jamaicans, you have Chinese Jamaicans, you have Indian Jamaicans, you have Syrian Jamaicans, you have Lebanese Jamaicans. In Jamaica, they've been there for 50, 100 years. Some of the Chinese people have been there for 200 years, yeah? They still see themselves as Jamaicans. They are called Jamaican. They're not called Chinese Jamaicans. They're called Jamaicans, i.e., how long will it take for um, people of um, a darker hue to be called English because... 
it's, to me, it's, it, it, it spreads out. It's the same with Australia. Australia, the, the, the oh yeah, yeah, I, I, Australia yeah. Are, not, are not white people. No, I completely, I completely get what you mean. But do, do you not want her to feel of Jamaica? Well, she has no connection to Jamaica. Well, I mean, the thing is, to me, Jamaica is a plantation. The history of Jamaica is slavery. It's slavery, it's plantation. The only positive history Jamaica has, in my opinion, is reggae music. No, but what about your pe really. what, what about your your family, your people, and her connections to those? Is I mean, it might not be an active thing in your family, so that's fine. I'm I'm just exploring it with you. I mean, it very much is in in mine, but is it in well, yours? Well, it is, and it isn't because, like for example, my grandparents' generation of Jamaicans are certainly not the Jamaicans that I see today. So. I, I would rather not associate myself with the majority of Jamaicans I see. Unless I go to Jamaica, I see decent ones and I see, you know, proper ones, hard-working ones. But the majority of the hard-working Jamaicans, they don't come here. They stay in Jamaica. It's only, it's, the, the times have changed. Like, my, my grandparents' generation is totally different, hard-working, um, highly skilled people coming here and, you know, abiding by the laws and stuff. I'm not saying that other immigrants are not doing that. I'm just, what I am saying is, people like, um, is it Mikhail? Mm -hmm. the guy before, he doesn't understand what it's like to not have a country where you belong. So you will use, I will use the word black because I can't use the word English. I can't use the word British. Well, I feel like I can't. Well, I can't well you can, but, because, but you're told repeatedly you can't by other people by the sounds of it. Well, yeah, yeah, for example, yeah, because it all, all boils down to race. If I say I'm English, well, no, you're not, you're black, so how can you? But then say again, you know, somebody from Poland could come here 10 years ago, assimilate, speak the lingua, and then all of a sudden, no one asks him where he's from. If they don't have an accent. I was saying, if you speak the lingua, after, after a while, you're going to speak with a, with a British accent and you'll be assimilated. But you'll still be an immigrant. So, what do you feel most? British, black or Jamaican? Neither. I feel like a nomad. OK. I feel like I have no land. And, and I'm fascinated by this, but it's nearly three o'clock. Just briefly, wh wh why do you feel you have no land? What about where your parents, grandparents, great-grandparents and great-great-great-grandparents were from? Where your family's gene pool is, resides? Well, again, if, if you're going to go back there, I mean, that is built on slavery, brut brutalisation, torture, murder, rape, pillaging. That country, to me, has, doesn't have a good history anyway. Um, apart from, like I said, reggae music. All right, thank you, Max. I, I, um, we, I want you to call if we talk about this identity stuff again. I really do. Thank you very much indeed for your call, Max, in Hearn Hill. I